So this shot's finished. Next one I want to look at is I've got this girl walking past um, a series of panels. So what I have in compositing in DS, I have um, three different areas. I've got a timeline that holds my clips. Take this old key off. Um, so I've got this girl walking past these panels. And what we want to do is add in um, all these guys in uh, the various band members in each of these panels with a you know, cool grungy effect and the text and all the rest of that and have that tracked with those panels. So that's what we're going to do in the composite. First thing I need to do is key the girl. I'm going to get rid of this um, green screen so that we can see something through this window. So I'll add a blue green key to this. So we'll just pick the key color. And then we'll turn on output mat so we can see what the uh, keyer is doing. We'll balance this out a little bit. And then on the uh, secondary page, I can go ahead and clean this mat up and force uh, the image either to be completely white and black or, uh, or leave the grayscale. So I'll go ahead and do that. Turn that off. And then we'll put something down below these windows. So I've got a couple of clips um, of the band members. We'll drag those into the node, into the uh, tree, and we'll start comping this together. So first thing I need is a composite node. Um, let's right click and we'll add an effect and grab the composite node. And then what I can do, this is kind of like a mini timeline. I can add tracks to this or layers by hitting the A key. And we'll put the girl on the top and then one of the guys here on the background layer. And you'll see him composited in the window now. But he doesn't track with the shot. So we need to do the tracking next. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add, add a tracking effect in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is add this tracker into this composite, and what I do is I have a, a reference, and that's the girl walking. I'm going to use her to refer to the uh, tracking marks, and then my layer is the guy in the window, and we'll feed that into the composite node. Double click to open up the tracker, and what we'll do is a one point track, and we'll just drag our tracker up to this little tracking point here on the, uh, on the right. Okay, like so, and then we'll go ahead and we'll just tell it to um, track forward from here. We can zoom in, we can pan around as it's doing its job so we can see if it's uh, working correctly. If at any point it failed, it would stop and throw up an error for us and allow us to uh, make changes. Okay, so I've tracked forward. Um, I'm going to another shot here, so I've gone as uh, much forward as I can. And then I'll go ahead and I'll just show you the, uh, the output here. So I have the guy tracking with it. But he's a little bit big, so let's go ahead and add a DVE in before the tracker happens. Uh, get my DVE tool, digital video effect. Oops. So and we'll drag this in. Let's get it out of one sec. Messed up my tree there. There we go. Um, we're going to add this in previous to the tracker, and then we'll just resize him and repo him. So let's shrink him down a bit and uh, move him up, and then we'll just crop out this extra material. Remember, this is the 4K um, R3D file that we're working with, and it's being tracked. Of course, we'll have to kill his green screen and get rid of all these tracking points also. But if I look at this now, he's tracking with that. If I need to, I can go to this DVE, and I can add keyframes in if I want to repo him throughout this move. So here at the beginning, maybe he uh, wants to be over here a little bit, like so. And then right in the middle, I might want to repo him over here. And that'll keyframe so he stays kind of centered. You know, and I can also resume, I can zoom this guy up also, you know, or, or rotate him or all kinds of stuff. You know, keyframe all of that. Okay? So once that tracking data is in place, I can go through and I can do anything I want to the footage that's tracked into that window. I can, I can get, back and, uh, get back to the original clip. So once I've done that, now I need to get rid of these tracking points. And we have um, a garbage mat tool in DS to do that. I'll go to Shapes, and we're going to grab um, a circle and just drag around this tracking marker over here, select it, and then we're going to go into the tracker, and we'll show a one-point tracker. Actually, let me turn this all the way up. Okay, so I've got my tracker, and I can go ahead and choose uh, Luma RGB or certain channels. In this case, uh, we'll do Luma. Oops, go back a little bit. Even though I made a, uh, a mess and I put the shape in the wrong place, I can fix that after the track. It's not a big deal. Go ahead and fix this tracker real quick. 
this up. And again, I'm only going to, even though I have 12 tracking points to deal with, I'm only going to track once. Once I have that data, I can apply it to different shapes and just do an offset on them. Almost there. Can that tracking data be exported? Yes, absolutely. You can also import from other applications, um, such as Mocha or Monet. <clears throat> okay, so I've got my shape, but I put it in the wrong place. So I'm going to go ahead and um, change into edit shape mode. And we'll just move this into the right position and make sure we turn the uh, fill to zero so that disappears. And once we've done that, we'll copy it and paste it. So what I forgot to tell it was to uh, record the offset that I'm doing now. And once I get all these guys covered up, they should follow the original track. Like so. Okay. Sort of. I had another keyframe here at the end, so I've screwed it up a little bit. But you get the idea on the back end here. I've got all these little circles that are following the original track data and taking care of these... Um, these shapes, the tracking markers. Okay? So once I've done that, the next thing I want to do is I want to add in um, a background to this guy. A couple ways I can do that. I can build another composite effect and, and build a background that way. I'm going to go ahead and just build it in the tree because then it makes it easy for me to carry this tree around to other um, inputs. So if I want another picture in this um, third window here, I can add, take the tree, copy it, and paste it, and then just pipe it together. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and get, get, get just a quick background. We'll add a um, radial gradient. Radial gradient. We'll drop that in. We'll pipe that into our um, composite here, and we need to composite the um, the original um, clip plus the background. So we need another composite node to do that. Let's copy and paste the one that we had there previous. And then what we want to do is radial gradient as background. Original clip. Feed that through our DVE. And then also we need a keyer to take the, the green screen out of this guy. So we'll add in another blue-green keyer on this. And then we're all done. We'll take that and just copy and paste it to the second input for the next panel. Blue-green keyer. And let's add that in here. When you set up composite nodes like this, can you save those nodes and take them in between projects? Absolutely. Yeah, they're really small. Mm -hmm. You can stick them in a folder and put that on a jump drive or email it, yeah. So um, same thing, we're gonna go ahead and pick the green here, and then we can see now I've keyed out the, um, the guy's background and I'm seeing the, um, the radio gradient behind him. Sorry, two questions. Uh, I'm not an editor, I, I, I do camera, I work with camera. Yep. Uh, but um, one of them is, at one point, could you do the tracking to the right and make it kind of endless? Yes, you could. So I can track forwards or backwards, and then once I've done the tracking, I can do what's called a gradient spline, so it'll just continue on to infinity, forward and backwards. So it's like she keeps walking, walk, I mean, I'm yeah. assuming we can overlap her movement with a... Yeah. Okay, and, and then what, looking at what you did with the paint, you can also fix the poor girl's bruise in yeah. her knee, right? Yeah, she might be here some. <laughs> <laughs> she might be here some. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you could fix that. Same thing, track a, uh, we, do, we do a lot of digital paint in this box. So taking things out and adding things in, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. So I've got this whole thing built now and, um, and tracked, and I would add graphics. Um, in interest of time, though, I'm going to kind of move forward now. Um, I can take all this, um, this nodal-based composite, select it all, right-click, and we'll fold this. Okay, it becomes a single little node. And then I'll copy this and paste it. And then I can pipe in my other clip. So we'll pipe this into the uh, patch. Now I've got this guy here. And what we'll do is just open up this um, effect property and we'll offset this DVE so he's in the right window. And put him down here. And we'll crop him. I've lost my other guy because um, the gradient's uh, on top of him. Hang on one sec. Your animation. Let's crop off this edge there. There's our other guy there. So now I've got both these guys in their uh, respective windows. <laughs> tracking 
And again, if I need to, I can repo this guy, I can keyframe him so he stays positioned in the center of the window. Okay, and I go through, of course, I can change that radio gradient background, I can add in different text, different effects, type that moves across, or, or strokes, or you know, all kinds of stuff. And it's really quick. Once you build the first one, the rest just snowball on top of that. It's really quick. So once I've done all this, if I want, this is a 1080 sequence, so I'm ready to go out to tape uh, once I render. Um, if I want, I can also drop this into a 4K sequence, and it'll upscale because I'm using red files as a dynamic link. It'll upscale for me, and um, the monitor, the central monitor is going to go away because this is a, uh, a 1080 or 2K projector. So when I go to 4K, you won't see it up here, but on my, uh, on my left monitor here. So all I do is open up a new sequence. Let me just um, file new DS sequence. And we'll do this one as a film red project. We'll go HD 16 by 9, oh, sorry, 4K 16 by 9, 25 frames. And then we'll drop this sequence into the 4K sequence. Let's go file. Uh, just change my preferences so it scales good. And does the DS let you output sequential DPS, right? It does. Absolutely. And you can crop or you can resize. There's different options for what part of the frame you want. You don't need all of it. And there's different lookup tables, LUTs that you can apply, both uh, 1D and 3D, um, depending on what uh, company you're going with. So here I'm going to go ahead and just drop this onto my video track. And if I did it right, <laughs> some of the repos, because of the way I built this, some of the repos and things I'd have to take off. Um, but there's my, this is my 4K um, picture over here with my effects. Now there's the, uh, the colored brush, et cetera. So now I'm ready to go out, once I render it, I can go out to uh, an EPX string with this sequence. So, um, you guys have any questions for me? No, nothing? There's a couple different ways I can work in DS. I'll just state this last thing. There's two different ways in MC5. You can create media with um, Metafuse that transcodes to MXF. The nice thing about that, it's a free program. You can run it on a thousand systems if you want, each one handling individual red files really fast. You can also use AMA in the Avid Media Composer. The nice thing about that, you can link in and start cutting immediately. However, there may be a hit. It may stutter. It may be uh, a little jittery. Um, and at some point, you're going to have to transcode to a different type of format, okay? either for working in the Media Composer or just to get the stuff out. If we work with AMA Media and DS, it's really nice because I can use the MXF media to start with that you create when you transcode. And then whenever I want, I can just flip that switch and say use the red files instead. Really brilliant. All my um, effects, everything follow. So they'll, they'll scale up with my red files. And now I'm working at, you know, four, I can start with MXF on a Unity drive, tying into what the editors are working with. And when those R3Ds become available, I can just switch and go to R3D.